Hi, in this video we're going to uh, multiply radicals together and then simplify. So the first thing you need to know is that you can multiply any radicals together as long as the index numbers are the same. So if we were to start this problem we would get 96, but then we'd have to go through a big uh, simplification process. So sometimes it's easier to start with these smaller numbers and break them up. So if we were to do that we could start with the cube root of 16 and we could break it down into its primes and when we do we get 2 to the fourth. And we know that the cube root of, excuse me, that 6 has primes of 2 times 3. So I'm just going to put this all underneath one roof. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of break it up to where I have groups of 3 if, there, if that's possible. So I notice that I've got 4 here and 1 here and so what I would like to do is to break that 2 up into 2 cubed take that extra 2 and put it in underneath a separate radical. There's the extra 2 that I took from out of the 4 and then that you have that 2 times 3. And since there's not a trio of any of these numbers and they just simply have to stay underneath the radical sign. But we know that when you take a cube root of a cube function that these two cancel each other out. So my simplified answer and my final answer will be uh, the 2 times the cube root of 12. All right, so let's take a look at another example. In this example, once again, we have uh, the threes that are the same, and so it's permissible to go ahead and multiply these together. We know that 25 is 5 squared, and that 50 is just kind of a multiple of 25, so that would be 2 times 5 squared. And now what we want to do is we want to kind of group these fives up into groups of three. So when we do, we're going to have five cubed. And then any extras that don't form that trio have to go into it underneath a separate radical. So we have a total of five, or excuse me, four over here. We've used up three of them, so we have an extra left over. And then we have that uh, extra two. So when we simplify this, the radical and the, and the cube root cancel each other out and we're left with 5 times the cube root of 10. Try doing this next problem on your own. Okay, so what you can see from this is that 32 is actually a perfect fifth. It's 2 to the fifth. And we're just going to leave that 3 there for the time being. And then multiply this times 4 and the fifth root of 24 well, I don't know if you explored that at all, but uh, 24 is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And what we're looking for is a group of 5, and so that is not going to simplify out to be anything other than that. Now, I can pull these uh, outside numbers together and make a 12 out of that just by simply multiplying. And then I get this, I'm going to take this um, fifth root of 2 to the fifth, and again, these two cancel each other and so that leaves me with just a 2 there. And then what I have left over is my leftovers from inside this radical and I can just multiply those back together. And then what final step is to multiply 12 times 2. So your final answer is 24 times the fifth root of 24. Our next example is a division problem. We can divide radicals uh, the same way. As long as the index numbers are the same, it's permissible to um, divide these. As a matter of fact, we can put these underneath one roof as one fraction if we'd like to. So it's okay to do that. Um, and as we see, we, that, that reduces down into one-fourth. And then again, it might be easier if I split these back up again for you to see that we have perfect squares in both the numerator and the denominator. And when I take the square root of one, I get one. And when I square, take the square root of 4, I get 2. So my answer is 1 half. In this example, again, that 3, just let it be on the outside. You can put this um, 6 over 3 underneath one roof and simplify it. And of course, that is equal to 2. And um, that's about as simple, simplified as it's going to be. In this example, we have a perfect square in the denominator, so there's no need to put those underneath one root. You can just simplify this. You get the square root of 12 
over 3 times the square root of 16, which is 4. And we know that's going to be 12. But what we need to also understand is that 12 has a perfect square factor in it. And um, it would be 4 times 3. And the square root of 4, we're going to replace that with a 2. And then we can cancel this 12 with this um, 2. And our final answer is the square root of 3 over 6. And that concludes this video.